two small boats, made of willow and bullhide, arrive on a pebbly beach. It is early autumn, and the arctic wind is beginning to bite. The hunters on the boats, men and women, disembark. One group starts to scour the island for small game, while the other group deconstructs the boats and converts their frame into a dog sled, with the remaining material packed into large leather sacks. They will spend the winter here, constructing shelters and finding what they can in this remote landscape. As they pass, they notice the remains of hearth, a sign that, that people visited the island generations before. Some of the hunters think, after watching flocks of birds, that they left the island for lands even further away. But that is just an idea, for now. Welcome to Lost Worlds, a video series all about the land, rivers, lakes, seas and oceans lost to prehistory. In this first video, I'll be talking about the mysterious island of Vikingbergen, a large island off the coast of modern day Norway that sank below the waves shortly after the last ice age. You might have heard of Vikingbergen's much more famous cousin, Doggerland which I'll do a video about at some point when I can bring enough information together. These two lost lands are very similar. Both were in the North Sea, both sported grassland and probably forest environments, and both, as I'll have a look at later in the video, were inhabited by hunter-gatherers around 10,000 years ago. So what is Vikingbergen? The area corresponds to the Viking Bank in the northern North Sea, a plateau about twice as large as the Isle of Man. It is roughly equidistant between the Shetland Islands and the coast of western Norway. Scientists know that this plateau was formed by a geological process sometime in the Silurian or Ordovician, which is about more than 450 million years ago, and was probably exposed and submerged many times throughout Earth's history. Importantly for us, the last time it was above sea level was during the last glacial maximum, a period of extreme cold beginning in or around 20,000 years ago. Now, during this extremely cold time, Vikingbergen was not an island as it was trapped underneath mile high ice sheets. But as temperatures began to recover and the ice sheets began to melt, it became the northern peninsula of Doggerland. A few thousand years later, progressively rising sea levels cut off Vikingbergen from Doggerland and it became an island in its own right, although when and how exactly this happened is not really known for sure. But it was probably the case by the time of the Younger Dryas period, about 12,000 years ago. Now this was not the only island created by the melting ice sheets. Another somewhat smaller island existed between it and Doggerland which hasn't been given name in any scientific literature, but I would call it Utsira Land, after the Utsira High, a subsurface bank that exists in the same place today. It is also worth noting that Shetland and Orkney, today archipelagos, were also largely single islands at the time. So what was the environment like on Vikingbergen? Was there any wildlife? Although the area has not had the same tension as Doggerland and other submerged landscapes, primarily due to oil interests, expeditions around Viking Bank have recovered cold adapted marine species that no longer live there today. So we can take a good guess that the island had a very cold, arctic like climate, similar to the northern half of Iceland or the rocky island of Jan Mayen in the North Atlantic. This does not mean it was too cold for anything to exist there, as trees were able to colonise areas just as cold after the last glacial maximum. As it was joined to Dogland for probably three or four thousand years at the least, it would be surprising that the island was completely devoid of life. There were probably subarctic grasses, coniferous trees such as pine and fir, 
and small mammals like arctic hares and arctic foxes. Around Weissenbergen, we can imagine there was a rich biodiversity of marine species. There was a cod, pike and bigger, bigger mammal species such as seals, orcas and maybe even dolphins. The waters around the islands were quite shallow, ranging between 50 and 30 metres for the most part and, and over 100 metres in, in other parts. So there probably were quite a few undersea forests of kelp, seagrass and other marine plants with easy access to sunlight. It was probably somewhat of a bird hotspot as well, in the same way that Jan Mayen and the Faroe Islands are today. Another question that's been asked about Dogland a number of times, and is also relevant here, is whether humans ever visited it. As Weissenbergen was only accessible by land during the latter stages of the glass glacial maximum, it's unlikely that humans ever went to the island when it was still joined to Dogland. However, there is actual archaeological evidence that human activity was taking place on the island, likely between 12 and 11,000 years ago. This consists of a small workpiece of flint which was recovered from a deep sea core directly from Weissenbergen in the late 1980s, and there was also a perforated basalt pebble recovered in the mid 1990s. The date of these objects is pretty much impossible to tell especially as the sea has affected their overall shape since they were deposited. But it shows, at the very least, that flint working was taking place on Viking Rogan, which suggests that there was some sort of hunting camp or overnight shelter. And it shows that there, there could have been animals to hunt on the island as well. The pebble is a bit of an odd one, as there are lots of similar pebbles like it on a volcanic beach in Iceland, which are thought to be natural, and they're thought to have been caused by bubbles blown through molten molten rock when the pebble was part of a lava flow. So how did this, how did it get to Weissenbergen? Most likely it was rolled along the seafloor by ocean currents from Iceland over hundreds or even thousands of years. Alternatively, it could have been picked up by humans as a kind of a special object from somewhere in Scandinavia. Where the worked flake was found is also interesting. The research team recovered it from a depth of 143 metres, which, if the sediment was undisturbed, would give it a date of around 15,000 years ago. This would be an incredibly early date, still during the last glacial maximum, well before similar finds turn up in southern Scandinavia and the northern British Isles. If we account for the possibility that sediment was disturbed by, by some sort of extreme oceanic event like the Storega tsunami, then it could be anywhere between 12 and 9,000 years old. In the absence of more evidence, we can look, have a look at finds from either side of the North Sea. A handful of single-edged microlithic points have been found in Orkney, which bear quite a lot of similarities with the single-edged points of the Ahrensbergian culture, a group of hunter-gatherer communities which lived in northwestern Germany, the Netherlands and southern Dogland, right in the middle of the Younger Dryas period. These sorts of flints are also found with the Fosna culture of Norway, which is linked to the Orensbergen and also goes back to about 12,000 years ago. Given these connections, Vikingbergen might, have, might well have been a bridge between the British Isles and Scandinavia, helping to bring about a shared technological tradition. To achieve this, because Vikingbergen was separated from the Norwegian mainland and the, and the British mainland by tens of, tens of miles of water, and at actually hundreds. Measly the peoples must have had quite reliable watercraft, probably made from reeds and animal skins, in order to cross the long distances of open water over thousands of years. The island may have been one of the first places that hunter-gatherers used as a bridge to recolonise mainland Britain after the peak of the Ice Age, although it is equally possible that Doggerland to the south was much more accessible. It may have also been one of the last places that Upper Paleolithic cultural traditions survived, well into the Holocene period, along with isolated sites in Scotland and Scandinavia. So, what happened? When was Vikingbergen lost to the sea? It was definitely underwater by the time of the Storega tsunami, a massive undersea landslide that flooded most of Dogland 
and the coast of eastern Britain. There was a rise in sea levels about 11,300 years ago caused by the overspill of Lake Agassiz in North America, which was powerful enough to cause a temporary drop in temperatures known as the Preboreal Oscillation. But this might not have been enough to cause the entire island to drown. Instead, it might have been steadily inundated by gradually rising sea levels over hundreds and thousands of years, the same way most of Doggerland was submerged. A date that would sort of correspond to the end of the Vikingbergen, Vikingbergen's life would be when similarities between Scandinavian flints and those from Scotland stop appearing. Although both groups may have conditioned the same technology and continued to making the same flints regardless of any fall off in cultural contact. My best guess for this, for when this happened, is about 9,000 years ago, when Orkney began separating the set different islands. But ag again, it's anyone's guess. I hope you found this video interesting. And if you've got any ideas, resources or suggestions for this channel, feel free to comment below. Make sure to check out the sources in the description so you can read the actual science behind what I've looked at. The lost areas of prehistoric Northern Europe will be something I'll hopefully return to in future videos. So make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out if that's something you'd like to know more about. Thanks for watching.